Okay, so what's our topic today? Traveling with our puppy for the first time. Maybe not the first time. Usually it's gonna be the first time because once you've done it, you probably don't need to know what to expect and what you should be packing and what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. It doesn't get much more exciting um, than bringing home a new puppy for the first time. But for you and your new puppy member, it is a once in a lifetime experience, but you only get one chance to do it correctly. So we don't wanna stress our puppy out too much and we don't wanna stress ourselves, ourselves out too much. So we wanna make sure that we are both prepared for them and for us. We are gonna talk about our puppies and traveling by airplane first. So when you travel by plane um, with a puppy, there are some things that you must do beforehand. Communicate with your breeder um, that you plan to travel by airplane is probably a number one important thing to do because um, the airline requires you to have a health certificate in order for that puppy to get on the airplane. And although myself and I'm, I'm hoping and assuming that all breeders um, get a health checkup whenever they are sending puppies home, they don't ask for a health certificate and those are different. So a health certificate is something that has to be um, signed by a USDA vet and it is required by the airlines. A health, a health checkup is just a, an exam. So they kind of coincide with each other because in order to get a health certificate, you have to have a health checkup, but they're totally different forms and you cannot go to the airport with just your health checkup paperwork. They won't accept that. So that is super important. Make sure you communicate with your breeder that you are traveling by airplane. Um, so then you want to choose your flight wisely. And what I mean by that is you want to, if possible, get a nonstop flight because you're traveling with a puppy that is in a small carrier that can't get out, can't go potty. And so if you have to have layovers and um, switch planes and, and rush to your second flight, it's just adding more stress on you, which in turn is gonna add more stress on your puppy. So it's not always possible, I know, but if you can get a nonstop flight, you want to make sure that you don't book a seat in a emergency exit aisle because they will not allow puppies to travel with you as your carry-on in those rows. Okay, so after you do that, you wanna see if you can possibly get a seat with extra foot room. So I know a lot of airplanes now, they'll allow a seat that has extra leg room, but you have to pay extra for it. The reason why I recommend you try that, if at all possible, is because um, you may not know this, but that puppy is gonna go in the carry-on um, bag under the seat in front of you. So that means if you have more space, your feet are gonna have more space so that once that puppy goes under, you still feel comfortable and you don't feel cramped. So that's it with choosing your flight wisely. Now, when it comes time to booking your flight, uh, most airlines will allow um, very few dogs on each flight. So you may try to book a flight and you don't have your puppy booked with you, then you go to add the puppy and either they tell you there's no space for that puppy or they're gonna tell you that the flight that you are on is not pet friendly. And what they mean by that is they can't accept pets on that flight. So it is very important to call the airlines before you book your flight. Make sure that the flight that you are wanting is pet friendly and that there is space for your carry-on pet. If there is, then you book your flight online, then you need to call them back and you have to book your puppy's flight or ticket. The other thing to keep in mind when it comes to um, booking the flight is that not every airline even allows carry-on pets. You also need to make sure that the airline that you are trying to use accepts pets at eight weeks old. Now, most breeders let their puppies go home at eight weeks. Some, depending on where you're getting your dog and what kind of dog it is, some don't even let them go till they're 10 weeks. So just make sure that they allow whatever age your puppy is, okay? 
Now you can purchase your puppy's carry-on bag. So you have to have a very specific type of bag for traveling by airplane with a puppy in the cabin. It has to be airline approved. It has to be soft-sided, which means it cannot be a hard plastic crate. It can't be a hard metal crate. It has to be soft-sided plastic, and it has to have three sides that are ven ventilated, and that is where like, it's just mesh venting um, so that there's plenty of ventilation for the puppy. Now, some requirements that they, they state uh, with the airlines is that you you have to have um, the three sides but also that the puppy has to be able to stand turn around and lay back down without touching the top okay so when it comes to picking which type of carry bag there are tons and tons of bags on the market but here are some important um, tips that I think um, are valuable <laughs> when you are purchasing one and trying to decide which kind to get. One is going to be that it is obviously durable. Remember, you are gonna use this for a young puppy, but you could use this with most Klikai, you could probably use it even when they're in adulthood. Um, so you might get multiple uses out of it. So you might be picking up a puppy now that's four, five, six pounds, but you want it to be able to hold a puppy that's 10, 12 pounds. Um, so make sure it's durable. Um, a few other tips. The bottom support which obviously i think i said the support but just because you're going to be holding it with the handle usually so it's going to weigh it down but that bottom support some of them have the wire on the sides some of them do not um, some of them are very collapsible and so when you try to put that on your shoulder with the five six seven pound it literally like caves in the center and then you, that poor puppy is getting like smashed like this. So um, pay attention to that part. And then also you wanna pay attention to the openings. So the top usually will zip open and then one of the sides will zip open. Not all of them have a big top and not all of them have a side zipper. The top is important that it opens all the way. Like you want that whole top to open. On the side, you want one that opens on the side as well. The reason being is remember that pin, I mean that carrier is going under the front seat, which means the person sitting in front of you is basically on top of your puppy's crate. You are not going to be able to open up the top and check on your puppy or give them a bone or what if they have an accident. But if you have a side zipper, then you can open the side while the puppy is under that front seat and still access the puppy. And so um, there's a couple things that we recommend that you bring. You want a collar or a harness. I prefer a collar. Even if you guys are gonna have a harness for your puppy, my recommendation is a collar to begin with because remember, you're putting your puppy in a soft carrier that they've never been in before and you're putting this big harness on their body and they're gonna have to lay with it um, and keep it on because you need to be able to access your puppy at any given time. Also, it is a lot easier to hook a leash to a collar that's right here when you open the front zipper and you hook it instead of a harness where the hooks are all over the place. But again, it is your puppy, it is your life. If you want a harness, bring a harness. And then of course your leash, your poop bags, uh, your water dish, a blanket or bedding, and preferably from the breeder so that it smells like their home, their litter mates, their mama dog, all of that stuff. A bone um, and toys. Now when it comes to bones, something for them to chew on, you want to avoid treats or um, bones that are easily digestible because that is going to cause your puppy to have to go potty. So you're giving them something to help them soothe their mind, right? To take away the, the anxiety or whatever it is, but you don't want them to consume it. The carrier, of course. Now, when it comes to the carrier, my suggestion would be, if at all possible, to ask your breeder if you can ship that carrier to her or him. All right, so now after all of that, you're finally ready to travel on the plane with your puppy.